Good afternoon, dear participants. Vance, thank you very much for inviting me to this great event. And oh, how do you? Okay, wonderful. So let me show you one of the most beautiful places on the planet and share my love, concern, and passion to Lake Baikal, which is located in Eastern Siberia. And it is one of the UNESCO World, World Heritage Sites. There are many reasons for why we should appreciate this lake, but it is one of the most beautiful places in the world. It is the deepest lake on the planet, and it contains the one-fifth of the fresh, uh, fresh liquid water of the Earth's surface. And moreover, it is very ancient and uh, very special to the people living on this shore. We don't call it the lake, we call it the, we call it the sea. Because of its special features, very unique wildlife developed on the shores of the lake and in the lake itself. More than 70% of the um, species in the lake are endemic and found nowhere else in the, in the world. And you can see this really funny fish. It doesn't have any scale. It gives life, life, life and it floats up and down from the very bottom to the very surface of the lake. And one of the most fantastic creatures in the lake is Nerpa or the seal. Of course, this has been recognized by the Russian government and internationally. Lake Baikal is the only protected area and nature territory within Russian Federation having a special federal law for its protection established in 1999. And because of this law there was a special um, division of the territory, special zoning created in 2007. The the most important thing is that not just the water of the lake is protected, but the whole watershed and the zone of atmospheric influence. What you can see in pink is the central ecological zone. It is relatively big and it matches the borders of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. And none of the industrial activities are accepted theoretically on the shores of the lake and within the central ecological zone. And moreover, 20% of the central ecological zone are covered with protected areas on the federal level, on the regional level, and on the local level. And there are some other protection, types of protection and type ways to development as special economical zones for uh, recreational activities. And theoretically, it looks like Lake Baikal is the most protected, and it should be very wild and pretty and appreciated by the people and government. However, uh, there are certain concerns. Before we move to them, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the system of protected areas in Russia and its uniqueness. Has anybody ever seen this little mammal in your life? It's called Sable. And this is the reason why the first protected areas were established in Russia. Um, have you ever heard of the term Zapovednik? Has anybody heard of Zapovedniks? Oh, wonderful, great. So, Zapovedniks are the special way of protection of territories. So, because of the Professor Svatosh in 1916, the first Zapovednik was established, guess where? on the shores of Lake Baikal, in order to preserve sables and their population. Sables are not only cute, their fur is very pressure, and they almost got to extinct. And so this is how, through the protection of certain species, the whole idea of protecting areas and total conservation developed in, in Russia over the past hundred years. And we do have protected areas where humans are not allowed. And, however, the history, the, the history changes and national parks were established and this is nice that the, the territories where people are allowed and conservation and tourism balance. 
However, in the past several years, there have been recent changes on the federal level, and the government decided that ecotourism should be allowed to all the protected areas on the federal level. And there are some other movements as a um, combination of management units. So, this is the whole system of protected areas of, in Russia, and the Povetniks are still the leading category a still the leading category, and Lake Baikal is, you can see it over there, <laughs> it is one of the most protected areas within the whole country. So, first, the protected areas and especially the Pavetings had the main function of nature conservation, scientific research, and um, uh, educa educational tourism. So, and right now it is official that they have to develop ecotourism on their territory and allow more people to, um, to come and enjoy the nature. It is, on one way, yes, it is good practice and it's worldwide. On the other hand, you can imagine this pristine area is being open to the public and hopefully it will be conducted in a nice and a, a smooth way. Let's see how it's happening on the shores of Lake Baikal. By the way, this is one of the most prettiest bays in, in the lake. It's called Chivarkui Bay, and there are really nice sandy beaches and hot springs. So there are, within Lake Baikal watershed, there are five nature preserves of the Pavetniks, three, three national parks, and three game reserves on the federal level. And the recent changes show that some of the protected areas are being united under one management unit. So basically, whatever what you see on the eastern shore of Lake Baikal is one protected area now, and the same applies to the western shore of Lake Baikal. And the transition is quite interesting, and for some territories it's a little bit too painful, for others it's beneficial, like national parks. The, one of the reasons why um, we have concerns about Wildlife protection on Lake Baikal is the financial situation. Over the past years, the government, the federal government had made a decision to develop the Pavetniks and give them additional financing. And the budget is, is several times bigger than their, that their annual budget had ever been. So they're trying their best to balance the new effort of the government to bring tourists and, and, and save the nature at the same time. And on the shores of Lake Baikal, the situation is slightly different than in the whole country because we, are, we have additional programs to support environment protection and um, tourism development of the lake or with some federal program. Called, for example, there is one called Lake Baikal Federal Program, Target Program and it's to bring more visitors and make Lake Baikal more touristically attractive worldwide. And the Pavetne Podlimoria, this is a word you probably see on some of the slides. This is really hard to translate. This, this is the name for new protected area. And if I try to literally translate it, it will be a protected territory by the sea. So here it is. You can see one of the pictures on this of how pretty it is. It's from the very top of the plateau. It is almost um, two kilometers high. And you can see the vast territories of Lake Baikal on one side and beautiful um, Burguzin Mountains on the other side. So this territory combines three protected areas right now. And what is very fascinating about this protection is that not only territory is under control and conservation, but also aquatic area of the, of the really big, of the very big um, area. And the number of visitors is still pretty low, but as the lake is becoming more and more attractive, people are coming and people are really interested in discovering wilderness on their own. Let's go back to this protected area, Burguzinsky, the Pavetnik Burguzinsky Nature Reserve. This is the, as I mentioned before, this is the oldest, oldest protected area on the shores of Lake Baikal. And 
Right now, it's been under management of National Park, and for for the Zapovednik, originally it was really hard to be managed by somebody else as one of the oldest establishments. However, it turned out in the years that, in the past couple of years, that it's actually good for the wilderness protection because they get additional financing, and at the same time there is no push for tourism development on the territory. So hopefully this will, will remain this way. And by the way, what is very unique uh, for the aquatic protection is this is pretty much the only place in the lake where the sturgeon population is growing because of the constant, constant patrolling of the water of the lake. But the other territory, which is called um, the Baikalski National Park, has more of the challenge, has more challenges for um, wilderness protection. Uh, this area is absolutely wild. It has taiga forest with um, Siberian pine with um, other kind of fur species. Um, and with the great population of bears, wolf, and deer, and elks, or moose, depending on <laughs> who you, <laughs> if you apply in American English or English English. Um, and right now, the number of visitors is only 25,000, which is um, affecting some of the areas. However, the territory of the national park is quite remote from big cities, and the road has been bad, but um, recently, there were new road constructions, and the National Park Administration thinks that the number of visitors will go grow in ten, three or four times in the next couple of years, because it will be easier to get to the territory of the use protected area. And if you notice, there were a couple of islands north to the peninsula, and this is one of the most attractive destinations for this national park. It is called the Ushkani Islands, and this is where the whole out zone for Nerpas is. And these are the islands. You get to one of the islands, and you take a trail to a small height, and you look at these wonderful creatures resting over there and just sunbathing. However, not only me, who is the person who wants to go there and see this place for scientific research, but there are many, many tourists who are really interested in visiting this place. And they're not scared of the distance. They're not, they, they are very willing to pay quite a big fee for, just for the entrance of the island, plus the transportation cost. And the National Park established the number of visitors had to be 20 visitors a day. However, the last time I was there uh, with a group of experts from the US Forest Service, we experienced five or six big boats docking to the island. So basically, there are no regulations on the visitation right now. And as Nirpas are the very shy animals and not very willing to interact with humans, there is certain threats to the um, to to this um, islands and the populate of, and the habit of the near place to rest over there. There is a try and attempt right now uh, of the national park to build a new height um, soundproof when it's almost negative 10 over there and it's snowing and building new trails and hopefully it will work out and. The nice thing about this protected area is that they are very willing to listen to suggestions and expertise from outside of their staff. They are very welcoming to partners from different countries. I personally have been with the groups of experts from the US Forest Service and from the scientific groups and they are very welcome to collaborate with non-profit organizations such as Great Baikal Trail, the organization which builds trails on the shores of Lake Baikal, and they understand the need of conservation of the territory and the demand in the growth of tourist, tourism capacity. And hopefully they will take into consideration all of the suggestions we scientists, environmentalists, and just patient people give them. 
So, thank you very much for your attention for my, during my presentation. And I just wanted to say a really big thank you to Boyd Norton. I probably used some of your pictures over here. And a very special thank you to Gary Cook, who invited me, suggested me to take part in this conference. <laughs>